Bang! Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency and blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking, it's going to be smoking. Oh, and there's going to be some cursing. <laughs> look, look, here I come in three. Look, look, two. You've been warned. One. Bang! Welcome, everyone. My name is Shamari Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Bang! You're welcome. Now, nah, we have a great show for you today, brothers. I know it's a little late, brothers. <laughs> It's a little late because there's that fucking medication I told you, man, and it fucking murdered me last night, man. And I, and then I did wake up to do the show. Like I didn't fully get out of bed, but I opened my eyes and I was like, and it, it had murdered me so bad. I was just like, I have a choice. I can do a shitty show at the usual time, or you know, just have a couple hours of sleep and then come in. Now I'm fresh, so now I'm good. So now we're gonna have a real show. This would have been garbage if I had done it at the normal time, man. I was fucked. Like, not out of, out, like, fuel or, or weed or anything, but just the pills, man. Those pills, they fucking, it's for my skin, right? And it messes me up. All right, guys. But look, we got a great show for you today, brothers. Bye. I just felt like I had to apologize. Because I just want, how I do this show is, I try to get this show in by between 4.30 a.m. and 5.30 a.m. here on the East Coast. That means the Americans get to, my American viewers, get to watch it before work. And then if it's, if it's on here by 6 a.m., here, 6 a.m. America, then that give that's at lunchtime for the British brothers or for the European brothers, right? And so it's like the sweet spot. If I can get the show in between 4 and 5 a.m., all right, the Americans get it before work, bang, and the Europeans get to watch it on their lunch break, <clears throat> which I notice you guys do because I can see it on YouTube. YouTube shows me what devices you guys use, and in the mornings I see iOS, iOS, Android, 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 <laughs> and then after 6 a.m., you can see when the Americans wake up because I see Windows, 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 Linux, Linux, Mac, 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 right? So, anyway, so that's how it works. But look, we have a great show for you today. Let's keep it moving. Look, so, <coughs> whoa, <coughs> Binance, they're going to launch 30 tokens in the U.S. So, this is that, you know, we got to get our, oh my gosh, I just saw right now our brother Poppy Wood said Binance is fucking with his money. I'll talk to you in a minute, Poppy. Shit. But look, so, you know how Binance is locking us out? And they're going to give 30 tokens for the U.S. I'm going to show you what they are. Then, 15 countries are going to start to track crypto. So, I'm not really sure how I feel about this too much. Um, so, But we're going to talk about it. Um, the G7 nations and then, I guess, you know, but a, couple, a few more are going to start tracking crypto, okay? And then, you know, I like to leave you with some money talk. So, you know, I like it on a Saturday to leave you with some money talk to go into your weekend. So, we're going to talk to the CEO of Agecroft, who says the hedge funds are coming. Oh, and they're making money already this year. Oh. Oh, the hedge funds are making money. So let me tell you, you know, one hedge fund boy, he sees his homeboy making money. He's like, look, look, look. <laughs> so look, look, brothers. Let's begin how we begin, brothers. Bangers. Bangers. Let me make sure this fucking thing's recording. <clears throat> All right. I want to go through that shit again. Look. Uh, what are we dealing with? Ah, Bitcoin. Yeah. Oh, refresh. Let's do a refresh. Yeesh. Okay. <laughs> 11393 $11,393 on the Bitcoin, brothers and sisters. Yeesh. We were at 11850 last night. <clears throat> so, we took a little drop right there. Yeah, healthy little drop. What was that about four hundred? Was that four hundred and sixty buck drop? My math might be off. I don't know, but anyways, we're down about four hundred and change right there. Look, look, brothers. Top ten today, brothers. Usual suspects, brothers. Look, look. Top ten: Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Binance Coin, Tether, EOS, Bitcoin SV, and Monero. Still holding the number ten, Monero. Look at you. Not giving it up. Not giving it up, huh? Yeah. Those homeboys are like, fuck that. We bout this 10. We bout this number 10, dog. We bout top 10 round these parts, homeboy. Yes, well, all right, all right. Yes, I like the spirit, Monero. Good stuff. All right. <laughs> Silly. All right. <clears throat> Mark moves the day, brothers. Well, would it be any surprise for me to tell you that the markets have moved today? A single digit up to a single digit. <laughs> all right, brothers, let's get going. Look, look, single digit up, single digit down, brothers. Yes, what a shock. Single digits up, single digits down. Single digits up, single digits down. Pretty low single digits though, right? 
Yeah, all mid, uh, low singles. Single digits up, single digits down. Hey, Grisha, look at you. Single digits up to single digits down. Two single digits up, two single digits down. All right. It's look who lost money today, brothers. You see anything in here you like, you go get it because it is on sale, homeboy. Hook, <laughs> brother. Top 10 loser of the day. Oh, there's some sales here. Top 10 loser of the day, brothers. Lisk, bite them, or bite coin. <clears throat> GX chain, Maximine coin, Quant, Educare, Ardor, Ren, Nexo, and Verge. Yes, that's you made money today, brothers. Look at you. Mm, not much. All right, look, look. Top 10 wins of the day, brothers. Top 10 earners, top 10 gainers. Look, look, top 10, Clipper Coin, Egrisha, Nano, Augur, Holo, Raven Coin, Odom, Ox, Energy, and Cardano. Let's look at total market cap of the day, brothers. What are we at? 293.4, total market cap of the day. Yesterday, we were at, wow, oh, fuck, we, yeah, okay. Wow, well, we did take a hit, that's right. Okay, excuse me. So, uh, today, we're at 293.4. Yesterday, we're at 307.3. So our market cap is uh, what are we at? Fourteen billion down around there, around fourteen billion in market cap. Total volume of the day. What do you got? Fifty-five point zero on the on the on the volume. Yeah, okay, that makes sense as well. And so yesterday we had fifty-seven point six, so we went down two point six billion on the day. It's down two point six billion on the day in volume gives us a what did I just say here? And we went down, what was that, 14, what was it, 14 billion in market cap, bringing us a Bitcoin price of less, or $400 less than we had it yesterday. Sounds about right, brothers. Look, look, nothing to see here. Let's keep it moving. All right. Look, look, brothers. Binance, bang, considering support for 30 tokens for U.S. customers. <clears throat> so you know the whole thing oh man right now like right this very second i'll show you guys right here i was just looking at it look at poppy said fucking binance says i have insufficient funds to withdraw what the fuck that's at 7 22 a.m it's now 8 27 a.m so i gotta go talk to poppy and find out what the fuck that's about homeboy damn that's better i got loot on there man i gotta get it all off i gotta get every scrap every penny i gotta be disciplined I told you guys i'm gonna do some Portfolio juggling this weekend. Uh, dash, buy, ontology gone. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna rotate those into Singularity Net, <laughs> and I'm gonna get them from Binance. Now I'm scared. I'm scared, but I mean, <clears throat> this is annoying. And one of the brothers is like, "What the fuck? They're not letting me have my money." All right, but let's just go with our stories for a second. I'll figure all that out, and if it's a big deal, I'll tell you guys about it on Tuesday. All right, brothers. So Binance considering support for 30 tokens for U.S. customers. So, major cryptocurrency exchange Binance. Hold on, hold on. Let me have a sip. I don't like what's going on over there at Binance, man. Getting hacked. KYC shit. Oh, I don't like that at all. I used to really like Binance. I found it a good customer service, right? Anytime you'd get a hard fork or something, they'd be like, yeah, we support your fork. Right? Or like when, when, when. V chain or anyone gives you your free coins, they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll give you your coins, right? It, I found that about Binance the part that I liked. It was very customer friendly, right? They're like, yeah, yeah, just leave your V chain here. We give you the free V Thor chain or you know that other coin you get from V chain. Holy, I must have a shit ton of those. I gotta figure out how to get them off there. But that's what I liked about Binance, right? Remember the hard forks we did? Yeah, Binance was like, yeah, yeah, we support the fork. We'll give you your coin. I did. I got all my coins. I got everything. So this hacking shit in this KYC thing, KYC thing is it's a little annoying to me. All right, brothers, look, look. Let's get going. <clears throat> Major cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, has announced that it's expanding the number of digital assets available to the United States-based customers. So, per a blog post published on August 9th, Binance is considering support for 30 digital assets on the Binance U.S. marketplace, uh, its cryptocurrency exchange platform accessible to U.S.-based customers. So, I don't... Um, 
Oh, the, the exchange isn't open yet, though. It's not open here in America yet, right? They didn't open that. Ah, no, of course not. We would have heard an announcement. All right, all right. Anyways, so major tokens <clears throat> under consideration include Bitcoin, EOS, Ether Cardano, Cosmos, Basic Attention, Tether, USD, and B-Chain, among several others. And actually, here's the list right here. So ADA, Bitcoin, Hot, Mana, Ravencoin, Waves, Atom, Dash, IOTA, Nano, TrueUSD, XLM, Stellar, BAT, uh, EOS, Link, NEO, USDC, XRP, BCH, ABC, or Bitcoin Cash, ABC, Ethereum Classic, Loom, PAX, USDT, Zilliqa, Binance Token, duh, Ethereum, Litecoin, Rep, Beachhead, and Zark, or whatever that is. ZRK. Look. All right. So those are the 30. So I know, I know. And I, I read about that. People are like, yo, where's the Tron at, homeboy? I know, I read it. Someone, a bunch of guys were complaining. I was going to read that story, but then I already chosen the stories, and so fuck. So Binance is evaluating the BUB tokens under its digital asset risk assessment framework, which it introduced in order to help determine the legal compliance of blockchain projects listed on its platform. The framework audits five fundamental areas of each project. <clears throat> so to get on this platform... They're going to evaluate you by five fundamental areas. All right. Such as whether it affects Binance U.S.'s ability to comply with certain legal requirements, whether an asset's market supply and demand are reasonably, reasonably fair, and whether an asset is technologically secure in terms of transactions. Well, that's only three things, buddy. Anyway, in mid-June, a crypto potato report warned crypto enthusiasts living in the U.S., that they will have no trading options for many cryptocurrencies when Binance becomes unavailable to them in September. I know. So I'm not fucking around either. That's why I'm loading up on Singularity Net big, 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 big time. Right? The other ones, I mean, in terms of my own portfolio, what I have is pretty basic shit. So, you know, and it's going to be everywhere, but that one Singularity Net thing. So if you got some tokens, uh, if you're investing in some stuff and it's, yeah. Well, all I'm saying is if, if you can only get it on Binance, just load up now, man. Load up. <clears throat> uh, in early July, BAM Trading Services, the operator of Binance US, hired Catherine Coley. Coley is a former liquidity management expert yeah. at Ripple, who will oversee the launch of Binance US and bring BAM's market to North America. Bang! So, look, look. So, there's the list of coins right there, brothers. Um, it looks like what they're saying. And... Uh, yeah, we got to remember, it's August 10th right now. Yeah, get your shit off Binance, get your shit off Binance. If you're an American, get your stuff off Binance. But here's the list. Take a look at that list. And if you got something in your portfolio, but that's not on this list, load up now. Before, If you're an American, before, before we're not allowed to go get it over there. You know what I mean? That's why I keep telling you the singularity and that thing. Yeah, I'm going to load up so they have it. So, yeah, if they don't get, let us have it, well... I already got it, right? <laughs> you get what I'm saying. All right, brothers, look, look. Not telling you what to do with your money, but just my opinion, and that's what I'm going to do in full disclosure. So look, look, support for Tordic and Binance. Thank you. Bang. All right. Look, look. 15 to countries to develop crypto transaction tracking system. Now, luck. I'm not a person who's paranoid, right? I don't really give a fuck if you sell my data. I don't give a fuck if you watch what I buy. Yeah, you want to watch me buy a pair of polo underwear on, on Amazon? Have at it, fuckstick. You want to watch me buy a lamp on Amazon? Go for it. Yep. You want to watch me buy a pair of sneakers off a of Nike? Have at it. I don't care. That doesn't bother me. But this thing here that they're about to do with this crypto thing, it's a little bit, because I read it in a few stories. I told you guys, I usually read the same story about three or four times, and then I pick the one story to read to you. And look, some of those stories made it sound a little more invasive than I care to like. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I mean, it sounds like they're going to track hard. <laughs> like, they're going to know every coin you have, every coin you move. Yeah. So you see, like, I'm not a paranoid motherfucker. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. If you want to watch me buy something on Amazon, go for it, fuckstick. I don't care. This one is a little deeper. It's a little deeper than the normal. You know, I'm not naive. I'm not an idiot. We lost privacy back when I was a kid in the 90s. That used to be an issue, right? So, I mean, people talking about this shit today, you guys sound funny. <laughs> Your privacy was gone a long time, probably before half of you were born. Well, the kids, if you're like a kid, you know. 
I was long gone when I was a kid. That happened in the 90s. Actually, under Bill Clinton, everyone was talking about it, right? All right, anyways, though. So let's check it out. But, okay, so, sorry. <clears throat> That's a negative aspect. Well, I don't, I don't say negative. I'm just going to let you guys decide. I'm not going to. But. Wait, right, let's read and then go on. Let's read and then go on. And then we'll talk. All right, so about 15, <clears throat> about 15 global jurisdictions, including the G7 countries, will reportedly develop a system for tracking crypto transactions to prevent illicit uses of cryptocurrencies. The Financial Action Task Force is planning to prepare. So remember, we've been talking about FATF. They, they pronounce it FATF. The Financial Action Task Force, we've been talking about that fucking all year, right? I think even after, I think we even talked about it in at Q4 a couple times last year. So the finance, remember, it's the global system. It's the global. It's like a new thing. It was brought out, you know, kind of like it's a, an NGO for the world, and companies, countries. Sorry, not companies. Although your company, your country is sort of like a company, <laughs> but your country is going to become financial action task force approved. All right. So that means that your financial systems, uh are like sort of, I guess, money laundering proof and <clears throat> terrorist financing proof. That's what the Financial Action Task Force is, right? Um, the Financial Action Task Force is planning, and so they have power, you know what I mean? Like countries are doing what they say. Like the Financial Action Task Force says, yo, do this, this, this. Yeah, America's doing it. Britain is doing it. Germany, all those guys. The Financial Action Task Force is like, look guys, bang, bang, bang. And they're all doing it. Yeah, yeah, like it's got power, you know what I'm talking about? It's got power. Like, if it if it says, like, yo, yo, your shit's lame, dog. You got to change that. The countries are like, fine, we'll change. That's what they've, they've uh, agreed to do, to have a, a unified, global, safe financial system. And it's going to be through this financial action task force, okay? Yeah, this thing has power. You know, it's not like the World Bank or the IMF where they give you you know, they say some shit, but then no one does anything. <laughs> no, this is real. When these guys say it, your country is going to change their laws. Remember, we read about it yesterday. <clears throat> Europe um, Europe has the AMLD5, right? Anti-money laundering directive number five, right? Which is their answer to the Financial Action Task Force. The Financial Action Task Force said, you got to do this and this and this. So what Europe did was say, oh, fine, okay. And they made their AMLD5 uh, laws, which are... FATF compliant, right? And then we read about, which country was that? Oh, that was the Czech Republic, right? Right, and then when we read about the Czech Republic, they're gonna go actually even further than the FATF rules, the AMLD5 European FATF rules, right? And was it Cyprus went further and the UK went further? So, but that's the benchmark. The Financial Action Task Force, bang, that's the new benchmark of the world to make your money safe, okay guys? All right. See? If I had done this show earlier when I was all tired, I wouldn't have talked about all that. All right, now, look, see, you got to learn something. Look, so the Financial Action Task Force is planning to prepare detailed measures by 2020, according to a report by Tokyo-based newspaper Nikkei on August 9th. The new system, all right, so let's slow down because I want everybody to get this. I don't know how I feel about this. The new system intends to collect and distribute personal data on individuals who, con who conduct crypto transactions in order to prevent funds from being used for illegal activities such as money laundering and terrorism financing, the report notes. While a number of global jurisdictions have not adopted regulatory frameworks in regard to the crypto space, the new international initiative is expected to contribute to the development of legal measures globally. And so that's the good part about this, okay? Is that, yeah, man, you know, yeah, if you just have global standards and it's a good global standard, yeah, well, these fuck sticks, the institutions aren't going to be afraid of anywhere, are they? If, if your country is just already fat F approved, yeah, well, then all you got to do is your little crypto regs. Like, just decide whether they're commodities or property or, or securities in your country, and we're good to go, right? So this takes the, – the beauty of this fat F thing – oh, I never did say that to you guys. I did want to tell you guys this before. The beauty of this fat F thing is that, right, we have to wait for our politicians – to come up with the anti-money laundering laws and all that, 
yeah, well, we're fat af- there. Those are the rules. Just follow those and that's it. So it actually is good for us <laughs> if you got a bunch of lazy politicians like ours here. And I'm sure yours where you are too, homeboy. <clears throat> yeah, now it takes it out of their hands. They don't have to pass the laws. Yeah, that's it. You got to just do what Fat F tells you to do, what the, F, what the Financial Action Task Force tells you to do. Do you see what I'm saying? So it speeds things up for us, this Fat F thing. You guys get it, right? What I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say to you, right? If your country's already Fat F'd up, well, all right, the SEC is not going to complain about uh, terrorist finance ring because there isn't anymore, right? We're already Fat F approved. Do you get what I'm saying? Whereas right now, when we're not FATF approved, well, now the SEC has got their fucking put their two cents in. The CFT, everyone's got to put their two cents in. Once FATF, we're approved. Shut the fuck up, man. We're approved. You know, we don't have to wait for you anymore. We, we're done. You get it? I hope that's making sense. I hope I said that properly. In other words, it takes it. Okay, just let me say it one more time. I'm sorry. Look, in other words, our politicians, we're waiting for them to give us these rules. And. Now that Fat F's here, yeah, we don't have to wait for them. Our country already knows, oh, we have to be do this. In other words, the rules have, oh, that's the way to say it. The rules have been written for our politicians already. Now all they, and, the, and so now it's just about your country doing them. Yes, all right, yeah, we don't have to wait for votes in our Congress or Senator or when you're your parliament or anything like that, right? All right. I really wanted to get that across there. So look, look. What are we dealing with? Where are we at? Our global measures, yes. So look, look, according to the report, a system of measures will be enforced after the policies are introduced in 2020. Once adopted, the private sector will manage the system, the report notes. All right, the private sector. What? Wait a minute. I think that's wrong. That doesn't make sense because it's a governmental thing. All right, anyways, man, look, look. Look, look, Fat F and G7 support uniform crypto regulation. That's the beauty as well. Uniform. Yeah, well, if I'm a hedge fund over here, I can go hedge fund over there, hedge fund anywhere. It's uniform. You know what I mean? I can make money over here, make money over there, wherever I want. Look, look. Yes, that's indeed, which is great for us, right? You know, so now guys don't have to do regulatory arbitrage, you know? You know, they can just, yeah, they'll just do their thing at home. <clears throat> Um, hold on, let me get a sip. So the fat of things good, but actually I read this other story about this and I guess this story is not, oh, here it is. Okay, I am going to read it. Okay, here we go. Hold on. It does seem slightly intrusive. You know, hold on. All right, the FATF released guidance <clears throat> for a risk-based approach in regard, hold on, for a risk-based approach in regard to virtual assets and virtual asset service providers in June 2019. In the document, the authority described a number of regulatory recommendations that should be applied in the 37 member nations. So do you see what I'm saying? Like, FATF is for real. Like the IMF, the World Bank, BIS, like these other, the United Nations, they always write reports, right? You know, this is what we think. This is what, what, I, what I think. Yeah, but you don't have to follow those laws. I mean, they're not laws. My bad. Sorry, sorry. First of all, they're not laws. You don't have to follow those reports. You know what I mean? Like, when the United Nations says, oh, whatever, you know, the water in some country is all piece of shit. Yeah, well, the, that country doesn't have to do anything about it. Right? When the IMF says, oh, well, you know, the Amazon is, is getting killed and blah, blah, blah. Stop doing that. Yeah, no one has to listen to that, right? When the World Bank is like, oh, well, these kids over here are dying of malaria. They need money. Yeah, you don't have to do anything, right? This Fat F thing, yo, dog, they're doing it, right? Fat F is telling the fucking the governments what, what they got to do, and the government's like, fine. All right, so it's 30, how many members? <clears throat> And that's what I want to show you. It, this is a this is a an, what we call an agency with teeth, with teeth. The IMF, World Bank, United Nations, 
Yeah, they don't have teeth. Yeah, they issue reports, but nothing happens. Yeah, Fat F has teeth. Fat F says, look, look, you got to get your shit like this, homeboy. The country's like, look, look, even Uncle Sam. You know, we got Uncle Sam here in America. Even he's like, oh, well, all right, dog. We'll do that. So look, the Fat F relieves guidance for a risk. Oh, we read that. Um, So, regular representative or seven minutes. Including in mon- okay, let's start over. Actually, this is important. The Fat F released guidance <clears throat> for a risk-based approach in regard to virtual assets and virtual asset service providers in June 2019. In the document, the authority described a number of regulatory recommendations that should be applied in its 37 member nations. Remember, they're recommendations just like the IMF and everybody does, but these guys are actually going to do these recommendations. Not like when you just read some IMF shit and you just tell them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> this is a real one. Including monitoring and reporting suspicious transactions by local crypto service providers. As a result of the guidance, four major South Korean crypto exchanges, including BitHum, UpBit, CoinOne, and CoreBit, reportedly faced tighter regulations when they renewed their banking accounts. You see what I'm saying? The countries are doing what that FATF tells them to do. FATF says, yo, yo, you got to tighten up. South Korea was like, look, look, guys, time to tighten up. This is good for us. On on July, because also the institutions are going to feel safe. Yeah, you're fat F approved. Bye. Look, look, I got a billion dollars. Look, look, bye. <laughs> Hell yeah. They're going to feel great. Look, on July 18th. Oh, man, this is making me happy now. <laughs> yes, yes, brothers. I mean, I already knew about fat F. I was happy. But now that I'm explaining it to you, it makes me happier inside. Look, on July 18th, G7 finance ministers voiced their concerns. The cryptocurrencies such as Facebook stablecoin project Libra risk upsetting the global financial system if they are not regulated strictly. Look, look. Fucking Libra. Look, brothers, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you, motherfucking Mark Zuckerberg, for your crazy little coin. Look, and I wanted to tell you guys about that. Actually, I didn't say this to you yet, but I've been meaning to tell you. Look, man, when I tell you Mark Zuckerberg is the greatest thing that ever happened to fucking crypto, I mean that shit. Let me tell you something. Right? His coin is supposed to come out next year. Yeah, well, what are these politicians and everyone doing now? They're freaked out, right? They want to come out with regulations before he comes out with his coin. Do you see? We read about it the other day. I know I did say it. I said it already. You already said this, Shamari. But I really want to emphasize this tonight, though. Well, this morning or whenever you're watching this. But on this show tonight, today. Mark Zuckerberg said he's coming out with this thing next year. All around the world, these politicians are like, fuck all this. We got to regulate before this young kid gets out here with his his fucking ATMs and his crypto. <laughs> I told you about the ATMs. It's all about the ATMs, brother. If you can add an ATM to your crypto, you are having mass adoption. That's the key. That's the key. Well, also the, the discounts, but that ATM's a good start. <clears throat> They're freaking out. And thank God for Mark Zuckerberg. He said he's coming out next year, which means what? Which means what? I'm going to tell you something, guys. I expect us to have crypto regulations by next summer. End of Q2 into Q3 next summer, full regular. I'm talking champion nation, motherfucker. America, bang. UK, bang. Europe, bang. They're not going to let Zuckerberg just run roughshod over this. (laughs) They're too scared. They're not going to let him do that. They're not going to let him do that. Well, it's not you can't you can't stop him. I mean, it's, it's a private company. He's allowed to do what he wants, but they're going to make sure that they're regulated, so that by the time he comes out with his shit, his shit fits their regulations. You understand what I'm saying? They're not just going to let him just go run wild, and that's the beauty of Mark Zuckerberg and this whole Libra Facebook crap. That right there, man, is that he freaked out these politicians so much. They want to get regulated before he launches, right? Because it's one thing, you know, if, if he just starts destroying everything, just f- throwing ATMs all around the world, yeah, well, too late, fucker. Too late. <laughs> and they're scared. They're scared, man. Like, it's for real, real, real. Like, it's not a, you know, I know I'm, I'm, I'm making it sound like, a, like it's a little joke, but it's for real. You know, um, you know. <laughs> yeah, man, this is not bullshit. Right, that Facebook thing, like the Walmart thing. I know Walmart's coming out with a coin. Yeah, but they don't care about the Walmart coin. I know they don't care about the Walmart coin because you know, it, it, <laughs> Walmart. 
they're not trying to do what Zuckerberg wants to do. Like their coin thing is going to be, it's more banking actually. That Walmart thing is sort of like, yeah, we'll let you keep your deposits with us and everything. So Walmart is more like just being a bank is what they, I didn't read it to you. We got to read, we'll read some Walmart shit. It doesn't affect our money though, but whatever. I should probably read it to you. But the Walmart thing is more like a bank. Yeah, the, the Libra thing isn't a bank. It's fucking, you know, money transfer remittance and stuff you know and buying stuff and a bank like it's it's too much it's too much so yeah so it's amazing and then that oh, and so what i want to say is i'm so happy guys and i want you all to be happy we're gonna get full-on regulations thanks to mark zuckerberg thank you mark zuckerberg thank you mark zuckerberg thank you mark zuckerberg believe me guys that's the one if it wasn't for him these guys wouldn't be getting around to doing fuck all <laughs> yo lazy motherfuckers they don't care. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about some money. Boom, hedge funds. Look, look. So, yeah, brothers. Here come the hedge funds. Well, it's not that they're coming. They're here. Oh, and they're making a good old piece of money. Oh, they're making a good old chunk of money. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, brothers. Hedge funds are here, and they're making money. These are the small boys. Oh, I never talked to you about this. Let me teach you guys a little something. All right. So, you know how I always tell you guys, well, Shamor, you said the head fund aren't coming. You said they don't want Coinbase. No, no, no. Let me, I'm going to explain something to you. Coinbase only has insurance. I think it was up to what? Um, how many million dollars? A hundred million dollars, right? I think was the insurance. And so, any hedge fund under a hundred million dollars, they will use Coinbase because... Because you have the insurance for it. So if Coinbase, if your money gets fucked up, yeah, well, Coinbase has to pay you back, right? And so that's why what, what I'm trying to tell you guys is like $100 million, I know that sounds like a lot. That's fuck all in terms of markets. In the market world, $100 million is nothing, right? Like when you get into the billions and hundreds of billions or you just get all stupid with it like Fidelity with the trillion. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Lock, lock. But look, let's just stick around with these smaller guys here. So that's what I want to tell you. Like, So the smaller boys are coming in right now. And that's why we've had the trickle. That's why our prices went from 3000 of Bitcoin in January to 10000 What are we at now? Eleven grand or so? What are we at, actually? Fuck it, let's just get a real number. Look, look. Eleven change right here, right? From 3000 Because they're smaller hedge fund guys. Smaller guys. And... What those guys, they're called prop desks. The pro prop, it's called a prop desk. And so a prop desk is, it's, it's, propri it's called proprietary trading. And so a prop desk is a hedge fund, but they're trading their own money for themselves. Do you understand? So there's two types of hedge funds, right? Like if I'm just a rich motherfucker, yeah, well, I can just register a hedge fund and trade my own money. Do you see what I'm saying? That's a prop desk. It's a, they, what they call family offices, right? Like, the it's your own money you're trading for yourself. It's not a client's money, right? Like, the hedge funds we're waiting for are those ones that take clients. You know what I mean? We're waiting for those kind of dogs, you know, who have clients. But there are also a lot of people, they're, they're called prop desks. Um, go to investopedia.com and search prop desks, proprietary trading desks. And those are just rich guys, but it's their own money. But they just do it for themselves, right? And those are the types of guys that are in here now that have come first. Of course, you can come first. It's your own money. You're allowed to do what you fucking want with it, right? It's not like these guys that were really waiting for the big, big, big money, right? Who, you you know, you got to have full regulation and all that. Like, these prop desk guys, they don't need all that because it's their money. So you don't have to be all super compliant and super this and that. Yeah, if I, if I run a prop desk, yeah, I can buy VeChain for myself right now. Can I? Probably under regular, <laughs> actually, I don't know their full regulations, but but, we're, but I tell you this, a regular hedge fund cannot buy VeChain for their client right now. A regular hedge fund cannot buy Ripple for their client right now. A regular hedge fund cannot buy IOTA, Chainlink, Cardano, any of this for their people right now. Only Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash here in America. Those are the only four regulated where you're allowed to take your client money and put in. A prop desk, it's not client money. Prop desk, it's their money. So he's allowed to do whatever the fuck he wants. And that's the money that's coming in here. Those are the people that Coinbase has been onboarding lately. And uh, and uh, 
You understand? So they're small. Like I said, it's only under 100 million. So I know 100 million, man, that sounds like a lot, dog. Nah, dog. That's in this world, in the finance world, in markets, 100 million ain't fuck all. 100 million is just when you're starting. <laughs> you know, that's a startup. Like in terms of a hedge fund, you know what I mean? Like, All right, so. Why am I t- telling you about that part? Oh, okay, so. Right. Oh, to tie it into the fat app thing? Oh, you're right, to tie it into the fat app thing. So, yeah, that's so that's the thing. That's who's here right now. On Coinbase, these prop desks, Google prop desks, the prop desks are the ones giving us the nice boost and that's why we're not tanking right we went up we went to 10 we went to what we go to we went to 10 i told you psychological area support and resistance bang we blasted to 14 of course because that's psychological area support and resistance and then bang we we started we've just been bouncing around right we went 10 psychological area boom and then we've just been bouncing around here right um and but you notice we've been bouncing around yeah not bang not down to 6,000, not down to 3,000. Yeah, because these are real boys now. The real money's here. Oh, you know, prop desks. They're small guys, but it's real money. They're not weak hands. Do you see the difference? Last year, we dealt with weak hands, right? That's what the whole market was. It was just us really buying all the shit off those weak hands that were running away terrified, <laughs> right? <clears throat> yeah, this is a whole different market we're in now. The market nature of the market has changed. The nature of the investor that has arrived has changed. Yes. When it was soccer mom and dad, that was one thing. Terrified, scared, shitless, <laughs> running. Yeah, yeah, these aren't those guys. These are prop desk boys now. Yeah, yeah, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't the, billion, the billion dollar boys. They ain't the 50 billion, 20 billion we need. They ain't no weak hands. They ain't no weak hands, so, you know, if you're sitting there thinking maybe one day I'll buy a Bitcoin for three grand, you can fuck all that. Those days will never, ever, ever, ever come again. Look. All right. Shit, that's a lot of preaching. I haven't even started reading this motherfucker. Look. Holy, I smoked a whole cigarette talking. But I want you to understand the nature of the market we're in now. They're not weak hands anymore. It ain't soccer mom and dad. It's these guys, these smaller hedge fund guys called prop desks, proprietary trading desks, okay? I've been meaning to teach you guys about that, but I never got a chance. All right. So, Hcroft Consultancy CEO, he says that Bitcoin is a fantastic technology and hedge funds will go for it. Well, let's see what he says. It's not a very long article, as you can see. Look, look. Don Steinbrug, the CEO of Hcroft Partners, has recently spoken about Bitcoin. According to him, BTC has a fantastic tech and it can be used in several creative ways. For instance, you can use BTC in order to hedge against inflation. <laughs> I don't know about that one, homeboy. But look, he recently spoke to CNBC and affirmed that he's amazed about how people are using BTC in order to bet against the economy during the current trade war with China. Oh, this trade war. Brothers, man, I made so much money. Thank you, Donald Trump. Thank you, Donald Trump. Thank you, Donald Trump. I can't believe it. Mark Zuckerberg and Donald Trump. I don't like those either of those motherfuckers. But I tell you right now, thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. And when it comes to my Forex trading, holy, thank you, Donald Trump. Thank you, Donald Trump. Thank you, President Trump, for that trade war. Holy, I murdered it this week, man. I murdered it. Well, everybody did. It was too juicy. Oh, man. If I showed you the trend scans, it was blood red. Oh, my gosh. It was too easy. Too easy. So, look, though, but um, he recently spoke to CNBC and affirmed that he's amazed about how people are using BTC in order to bet against the economy during the current trade we're trying. Okay, we read that. Sorry. All right. So, most people believe that in the U.S., that the U.S. will face economic crisis soon. So they're betting on BTC. Oh, we're not going to have any crisis. We're going to probably have a little recession. I'll tell you right that, the American consumer, it's getting squeezed right now. It's getting squeezed right now. It's not going to be any big deal. Though. It's going to be a little depress- uh, recession at most. But really what it's going to be, and this is the problem, and this is what I don't like, yeah, it's going to hurt the regular consumer. Right? 
Amazon, all these guys, they're going to make their money. Yeah, they're just going to up the money you got to pay. The consumer has to pay. They pass the cost along to the consumer. So this is going to hit soccer mom and soccer dad. You know, like my sister, my cousins, my, my family, you know, like regular worker bees and shit. Like, that's what sucks about this whole fucking thing. Oh, it's a trade war. It's a trade war. Yeah, you know who the trade war hits? You. It doesn't hurt those big corporations. They just pass it on to you. Trump says, yeah, I'm tariffing you 10 cent, 10%. All right, the corporation just raises the price 10%, make you pay that shit. And that's what's going to be fucked up for y'all. Uh, here in America and in China, man, China's getting fucked over, and we're getting fucked over. The consumer is, is what I'm trying to say, right? Not our economies. Our economies are going to roar. Our economies are fine, right? Like, nothing's going to stop that. But right now, I mean, we don't have any problems. But... It's going to hurt the actual human, the actual consumer. That's what this is going to hurt. You know, and Trump, he's not getting it, I guess. Like, you know, I mean, I get what he's trying to do to try to make them stop. The Chinese, it's true what he's what Trump is saying. The Chinese have been stealing our intellectual property for a long, long time, since I was a child. I read about that in the 90s. And uh, it's been going on for a long, long time, and it's true. How do you think they, they, they when I was a kid, China was a third world country. <laughs> it was a third world country when I was a kid. Japan was the number two economy in the world when I was a kid. It was America, then Japan. Yeah, and then China fucked around. China came in. And uh, yeah, like they think that. And they're just stealing everyone's thing and everything. And that's why they're so powerful now. Because they just stole all the intellectual property. They didn't learn how to build a plane. They just stole how to build a plane from Boeing. They didn't learn how to build cars. They just stole... Um, uh, what was it, Volkswagen, they stole like the engine, engine, uh, and Saab, they stole the engine uh, plans and just reversed engineered things. Yeah, that's what China did, man. Anyway, why are we getting into all that trade war stuff? Knock, knock, I'm supposed to be leaving you on some good money talk. Hold on. <laughs> Anyways, the trade war, yes, it's, 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 but oh, and what I want to say is this, though, it's not going to hurt the global economy. It's going to hurt America and it's going to hurt the, it's going to hurt the American consumer and the Chinese consumer. But you guys in Europe, Canada, Australia, wherever you are, that has nothing to do with you. So so don't worry about it. Don't worry about this shit. Um, it's not going to be some economic crisis. Right? Like this kind of shit. I'm going to face an economic crisis. It's not going to be some crisis. It's not. It's, it's going to suck for your, your Christmas presents when you go buy them for the kids this year. But it's not going to be some crisis. But it is a tax on America. It is a tax on America and the Chinese consumer. So. All right. Um, all right. So far, it has been a winning bet. Oh, buying Bitcoin. There is so much economic uncertainty that investors are buying Bitcoin and prices are going up quite fast. The investor has also affirmed that Bitcoin is here to stay and that the technology can be used in order to retain value when the economy is going down. Oh, dickhead. Bitcoin went down 90% last year, fuck sticks. I hate when these guys say that shit. You didn't just see what happened, the slaughter last year? Oh, let me tell you something. Do you know what you guys went through last year? Yeah, Bitcoin went down 90%. Yeah, that's the same as the Great Depression. All you brothers who were here with me all last year and you went through that, it's like you traded through the Great Depression. That's the equivalent of, in economic terms, of what you did last year. The Great Depression hit the whole world, right? Because it was the stock market. Well, make no mistake about it. The crypto market crushed to Great Depression prices or levels last year. 90% down, that was the Great Depression. Now, it did, the crypto stuff didn't affect the world because no one's into crypto. Crypto is a tiny little bullshit little market, so it doesn't hurt our economies at all. But what you did, though, if you bought with me, if you were here last year and you bought all the way through that blood red, you, know, you bought through a Great Depression, homeboy. Like, you don't even know how hardcore you are. <laughs> there is no market that's ever going to make you afraid ever again. <laughs> All right, I just wanted to say that. I'm proud of you guys like that. You guys who are still here from last year, like, lack, lack. You don't even know what you did, I don't think. Probably just like, yeah, well, you were saying just buy the dip. <laughs> yeah, saying it was one thing. You actually doing it? Look, you're a soldier, homeboy. That's why you're my killers. My killer bees. Look, look. I got killer bees, homeboy. Shit. All right, though. That's serious, man. I, I I wanted to tell you guys that before. Like, how kind of happy I am and how, like, shocked. Like, 
just working guys like and what you did last year with me right fucking blood red like that that was 90 percent down there's no such thing as that except the great depression that's the only other financial economic well i mean the tulip bubble crash as well and back in the netherlands way back in the days i guess if you want to go really historical into the 15th century and stuff but in terms of our modern contemporary financial system the the great depression is what happened last year to the crypto market and you soldiered right through that fuck stick so proud of you guys man that's awesome you don't even know how awesome that is but that's awesome what you did look all right let's go so there's a better exa- what are we talking about yes so the investor has also affirmed that bitcoin is here to stay and that the technology can be used in order to retain value when the economy is going down. There is no better example of that than Venezuela. Oh, please. The country is facing major... They keep bringing that up. If you were Venezuelan last year and you put your money in Bitcoin, yeah, your shit's down. Don't listen to that Venezuela talk. The country is facing major inflation and Bitcoin is a way to store the value of assets in a safe way because even with its volatility, it's safer than a marketing crisis. That's bullshit. Bitcoin ain't safer. If you if you're if you're a Venezuelan, and and you you wanted to be smart, yeah, you should have bought some fucking tether, <laughs> stablecoin, fucker. Yeah, your money would be stable right now. Bitcoin, Bitcoin went down ninety percent last year. If last January you were a Venezuelan, and you bought Bitcoin, yeah, y- you've only come halfway back. Whenever they say that shit, like Bitcoin's a store of value or something, I mean it is going to be a store of value. I'm telling you that. But I mean a safe haven against. You know your 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 fiat going whatever whatever, you know going crazy, volatility. You can fuck all that. You can fuck all that. The cryptos stable coins. If I was a Venezuelan last year, bang, I would have bought tether. Oh, I'd be good right now. I'd be good right now. Yeah, if you bought Bitcoin right now, you'd still be halfway down, right? You would have bought in at twenty thousand. Yeah, we're still only at eleven, so you'd still be halfway down. So that bullshit talk about. Yeah, man, Bitcoin's a, 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 a hedge against volatility. Hell no. Bitcoin's the most volatile thing there is. Fuck, we just went down $400 in one day. So, anyway, I don't agree with that crap. Well, it's not about agree. I'm telling you what's happening, man. You wanna, if, you wanna, if you wanna be in crypto and you wanna protect your money against, in, against your currency, well, yeah, well, you better get some stablecoin, fucker. Pick a stablecoin. That's what's gonna protect you. Bitcoin ain't gonna protect you. All right. And now this fuckstick says this shit. So he says the country is facing major inflation and Bitcoin is a way to store the value of assets in a safe way because even with its volatility, it's safer than a marketing crisis. It is not. Bitcoin itself is an asset in crisis. <laughs> Never mind a market, it's an asset in crisis. Never store your value in Bitcoin if you're gonna, if you really wanna hedge. I mean, I don't know what country you're looking at me from <clears throat> watching this. <clears throat> I don't know, if you're Venezuelan or something, and your country's all fucked up, don't get that Bitcoin. Just get some tether and hold, brother. <laughs> all right, or a stable coin. Hold that. Mm-hmm. So while hedge funds had a very troubled 2018 when it came to crypto, Most of them are getting huge returns this year. I told you, brothers, huge returns this year. Here it comes. Weak hands are gone. Of course they got crushed. They got crushed because all the weak hands ran. (laughs) Right? You weren't expecting so much (laughs) weak-handedness. But now, bang, bang, bang. Now the money's coming. No more weak hands around these parts. Soccer mom and dad, weak hand, they're gone. They're gone. Now we got the prop desks, small-time hedge fund guys. Uh, What do you call it? Family offices coming. They ain't weak. Oh, they're here to stay. They're here to party. They're the first guests of the party. You know when you have a party, you throw the you throw a party. They're like, yes, the party starts to blah blah blah. Yeah, you show over the first guests who trickle in, right? The first ones, right? And then what happens at the club? Uh, it's only club. Like, let's talk about the club. I live in South Beach, so you guys know. In the club, right? You got all the regular folk. Like they come in early in the in the night, yeah. You know, about eleven, twelve at night, you know. But then around 2, 3, like, so here in, in South Beach, we party till 5 a.m. And so, right, around 2, 3 a.m., yeah, that's when the cool people roll in. Once the party's already bumping, once everyone's already jumping, that's when you roll in. That's when you look cool. 
You know what I mean? You don't roll in at 10, 10 p.m. like a chump. You roll in around 2, 3 a.m. Bang, looking nice. Bang, looking sharp. Bang. And that's what we're waiting for. So we got these, we got the, we got the 10 p.m. boys. These prop desks. But now waiting for the big crew. Yes, the big money. You know what I mean? The big money to come later. So look. Where, where do we? So anyways, <laughs> why did I say that? Why was I talking about nightclub? Knock, lock, brothers. Look. While hedge funds had a very troubled 2018 when it came to crypto, most of them are getting huge returns. Oh, yes, the huge returns. Bitcoin is back, and this is the perfect time to use it in order to get as much money as possible. You're damn right it is. Traditional markets will be affected by the trade war. So a lot of money will be injected in the market, which is considered a safe haven by many investors. That's a lie. This is not a safe haven. But look, look. Bang. Money's coming. It's not a safe haven, but I will tell you this. It is a greedy little place. And when people see the returns that you can be made here, they'll come. I've taught you guys about risk on, risk off. So if you, you know, I already taught you about that. So stop. Don't listen to that kind of crap. Look, the hedge funds are coming. Look, they're making money. Look. Oh, and they ain't weak hands, brothers. They ain't weak hands. They are not weak hands. They're going to stay and they're going to hold. <laughs> so look, look. Hold on, brothers. Let's get the shout outs. Look, look. Bang. All right. What is Poppy and them saying, though? Because Poppy said, fucking Binance says I have insufficient funds to withdraw. What the fuck? What insufficient funds? I need to get to a. How are you preparing the system for upcoming block on the USA? All right, so the brothers are, this is right now. The brothers are, right? This is 8.37 a.m. Right now it's 9.11 a.m. that I'm talking to you. Oh, and then someone tweeted this. If you experience issues with insufficient fund bug or inaccurate balances after trades, the quick resolution is to make an open order, ensure it doesn't fill, and then cancel it. This may sink your balance. All right. All right, but let's get to the shout-outs. I don't want to talk about sad stuff. I like talking about money talk. Hold on. We got to go back here so I can show you money talk again. I want to talk about sad shit. I like to leave you guys with good stories at the end of the week. So when we meet again on Tuesday, here we go. So look, hedge funds are coming. Look, look, money's being made. Look, look. Yes, all right. Let's get rid of that sad stuff. (laughs) Not tonight. Look, not today. Look. What do we got? Edwin. Bang. See you, brother. Love you, brother. Bang! Yes. We got men. Love your brother, see your brother. Bang! <clears throat> Poppy Wood. Love your brother, see your brother. Bang! <laughs> Poppy's like about four hours away. You gonna be right by Shamari? <laughs> I don't know what he's trying to say. You all right? I guess he's trying to ask me. Yeah, brother, I'm all right, man. I just slept in the fucking pills, man. And it was like, man, I want to do a good show. Like, I could have done the show at the normal time, but it would have been shit. I just didn't feel like anything. It would have been garbage. I wouldn't have explained all that shit that I just explained about the FATF and everything. And that's the whole point, right? I got to be on point so I can show people stuff, right? Well, so you learn. I'm trying to make you a killer. You know what I mean? I got to talk about it. I got to teach about that. Look, look, look. Burks Big Drops. Bang. See you, brother. Love you, brother. Bang. Look, look. Medium. Bang. See you, brother. Love you, brother. Bang. Hurricane Master. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Sweetie. Love you, girl. See you, girl. Yes. Bang. Kong. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang! Yes. All the usual suspects. Oh, what's the uh, <laughs> what's Vinium guy there? What's he talking about? What are you talking about here, Vinium? V E T on Binance US list. Ah, yes, it was. It was. Bang! Let's take even another peek at it. Look, look. Let's take a peek at the list. Take a peek at the list, brothers. Bang! Look, look. Here's V Chain right there. Bang! Look, look. Bang! Look, look. Bang! Look, look. Oh, I'm in a good mood right now. Shit. Yes, 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 indeed, Benny. That's how it goes, brother. Bye. What do you say? B chain on Binance US list. If you look at the total list of Binance, is ninety percent the same? Has the ICE cryptocurrency data feed? Bang. Oh, I think he's trying to say what? ICE. What do ICE? What do you mean that? I'm asking you as if you're sitting here, <laughs> as if I can get an answer from you. I think he's trying to say. Ice is going to run back, right? Ice is the run who Ice owns the UX stock, the New York Stock Exchange, and they're going to own, they're going to run back. I think maybe what he's trying to say is that this is ninety percent of what the Ice guys are going to offer as well. 
I don't know what he's saying, but let's look at it. This looks like Snoop Dogg or someone about to do some dance. Oh, okay. <laughs> v chain, baby. Look, look. Let's bang this one. Bang. Yes. Dog Brothers, look, look. You know me. I don't really care about listings, man. These guys don't care about listings. They care about onboardings. But, you know, whatever, man. So, look, look. Oh, Binyam, he's got another one for me. What is he talking about here? CB Newswire. This has to be my favorite Reddit thread on B-Chain. Partnership. Read up, B-Fam. Lots of goodies in there. <laughs> oh, the goodie room? Yes. Look, look. Binyam brought me to the goodie room. <laughs> yes. Welcome to the goodie room, brothers. What do you mean by the goodie room, Shamari? Well, the goodie room is where I live, brothers. It's a place where a man takes his money, he puts it out there, and in a little while, it comes back with more. That's the goodie room. And so when I tell you, welcome to the goodie room, well, that's what you're doing, isn't it? You just bought a warehouse, didn't it? Now, I know it hasn't paid you off yet, but it's going to. Why? Because it's part of the goodie room. What is the goodie room, Shamari? The goodie room of the markets, brothers. The markets. It's like a big playground. You know, like like Disneyland, uh, you know, some big play place, you know, where they have roller coasters and rides and ice cream and stuff for kids and stuff. It's a big playground, a fun house, <laughs> a playground, not a playground, but you, like Disneyland, man. That's what markets are. It's a big old goodie room. And there's a lot of ways to have fun, right? Just like when you go to Disneyland, sure, lots of ways to have fun. You go take that roller coaster, take that roller coaster, take that ride, take that ride. Eat that thing, eat that thing, right? All this stuff in, in in Disneyland. Well, that's what the markets are. There's a lot of ways to make money here. You can make it through stocks. You can make it through options. You can make it through bonds. You can make it through Forex. You can make it through shadow banking, collateralized debt obligations, mortgage-backed securities often. That's deep shit right there. Whatever you want, swaps, futures, ETFs, mutual funds, right? Those are all the rides in the goodie room. Yes, those are all the rides in the goodie room. And so you're in the goodie room now, brothers. You're investors now. Welcome to the goodie room. Look, look. All right, brothers, let's move on. Look, look, Brent C. Spy lady. Bye. See you, lady. Bye. Look, look. A couple more. Yes. Oh, and I hope your thing's going, girl. Good. Going good, girl. Yes, she's going to be a supervisor. Yes, her, her little job. They're going to train her up. She's going to be the, the boss. Yes, blockchain style. That's our sweetie. Bye. I hope everything went good today with that. Nice. Nice. Yes, yeah, so that's she's actually going to learn or do something. I think she's going to take a test or something today. Or something like this. or Something. She has to do something today to be a supervisor. Look, look. DP Entertainment. Bang. See you, brother. Love you, brother. Bye. Look, look. Oh, look at this Chinese guy. Asian guy. What do you got? Yes. Oh, girl. Bang. See you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Rami. Yeesh, that's a good name right there, brother. <laughs> Remy McEulis, founder, director of Remy Net Arts. Bang! See you, brother. Love you, brother. Bang! And he's talking about MetaHash will overtake Tron and XRP in the nearly future. People need reliable platform, and the MetaHash is working on it. All right. All right. Gives a fuck. Good. <laughs> Whatever. I'm just kidding. You give a fuck. All right. That's good enough. Look, look. Oh, look at this son of a bitch right here. Look, look. Bang. Look, look. Bang. Look, look. Bang. Yes. Love your brother. See you, brother. Yeah. It's our killer. Our fellow killer. <laughs> this guy here, Herman Monster XRP. Look, look, Herman. <laughs> Entrepreneurial hodler. Bang. I guess he liked it that I let, I, I got angry at that guy. Oh, and guy, though. You know what? The truth is, I'm sorry. Uh, the truth. I know I said that shit yesterday because you kind of got me angry with the Pundi X. But actually, I wasn't that angry. But I started calling you a fucker. And, or, I don't know what I said, but it was, it was very rude of me. And the truth is, I was just so angry that I, I fucked up taping the show that I got a little more angry than I, than I was, okay? And I watched it afterwards, and I was like, Shamari, what the fuck, dude? So... I didn't mean to be all rude about it. Like, I do mean the truth. I mean, don't tell me about stupid coins on little things. Like, I don't do that. I didn't mean to get all angry at you like that. 
you know. And I mean, and I did do the Pundi X thing, so I mean, you know, come on, brother, you know. But, but being, you know, swearing and everything at you last night, yeah, all right, I'm sorry about that, all right? Bang, all right. Look, look, I'm not too afraid. I'm not too afraid to admit when I've done wrong. Look, look, moon landing. Bang. You know what I mean? Look, look. Uh, we all get a little wild at once in a while. Look, look, crypto decredit. Oh, decrypted. Bang. Oh, the forks guy. Bang. Urgh. Trend trade those markets, brother. Oh, I hope you made money in those markets this week, homeboy. You say you're a forex trader? Look, look. I took that out on Australian dollar earlier this week. Did you get in on that GBP last night? Look, look. Ha <laughs> ha, brother. Look, look, brother. Framing. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Oh, yeah, we shorted the fuck out of that British pound last night. Yeesh. Yeesh. All right, so where's this guy's thing? Because he asked me to say it, and I didn't say it. He's like, you said banging, but you didn't read my thing. So look, man, I don't know if this is you, the guy who talked to me about, and let me show you guys, because he talked to me about it here. He's like, you said, where is he? Oh, where was that guy? Damn, oh, here it is. He said, damn, you saw my tweet and checked my profile, but didn't read the actual post I linked. All right, so I think this is you, because I can't find anyone that I didn't bang or read, so I think this is you, Martin. Now, Martin, I do not condone people investing in STOs here, so let me tell you this. Please don't send this kind of stuff to me again, because I'm not going to read it, but because you were so nice about it, you made me feel bad, like, oh, I didn't even read the guy's stuff, so I'm going to read it this time, but I don't, look. Around these parts, if it ain't generating revenue, don't buy it. That's my motto around here. Yeah, just wait till it's generating revenue. Why do you guys, and that's the thing. Why do you guys do that? Like, what's wrong with you guys? Like, look, look, we have to have a chat here, brothers. What the fuck, dogs? What the fuck? Why do you do that? Look, we're in a market, right? This market is composed of three parts. Hey, I mean, have you not figured it out yet? Three parts. There's the part that's regulated. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum. Yes, regulate. Well, here in America. So for us Americans, okay, this is how we go. How it goes. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ethereum. Bang, that's regulated. That's the good, clean stuff. Good and clean. That's where all these futures and ETFs and all that's they're all trying to do it, right? And then the rest of this market, the other 2,996 of these pieces of shit that aren't regulated, well, there's two things there's two categories of these ones. Ones that are generating revenue, VeChain, IOTA, Chainlink, Stellar, all the platform tokens, Tron, and then there's all the rest that aren't making money yet. They're just white papers, they're just main nets, test nets, just we're gonna do this and that, right? There's three parts to this market, right? Those that are regulated, and that's good to go, I mean, obviously. Those that are actually generating revenue now, even though they're not regulated, they're generating revenue now. And then those that are just promising something. So I don't understand why do you guys keep buying that shit over there? Just wait till if you see something from over here, come over here, then you buy it. Once it reaches this side, you buy it. All that crap. Don't buy that crap. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. It, it, that's hopes and dreams. Right, hopes and dreams. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. Well, you're gonna try to do this and do that. How many restaurants in your in your city, wherever you live? Yeah, how many restaurants open and close? Yeah, the restaurant guy thought he was gonna sell all this food. Yeah, but it didn't work. So wait till it works, guys. You know, yeah. You know, your large caps, bang, you're good to go. These ones. It's risky because we aren't regulated yet. It's true. Your B-chain, IOTAs, all that's risky right now because we're not regulated, but we will be. And so that's why I don't worry. There's a tsunami coming and we'll be, we'll be good to go. But this shit over here, it's not even doing anything. These blockchains aren't even generating any revenue yet. It's a promise, a hope, a dream of what they want to do. What, are you so rich that you you think that you're a, you're a venture capitalist? <laughs> Is that what you want to be? Just buy stuff that is working already, right? Do you ever hear of an IPO of a dream? Have you ever heard of a, a white paper IPO? Fuck no, motherfucker. It goes on the stock exchange when it's making loot, when it's making money. 
right? So stop doing that. I know, I know. A lot of you guys own all this bullshit. All right, so, but what I want to tell you is, so I guess I'm getting around to is, I'm telling you, don't buy this, okay? This thing that this guy's talking about, but I'm going to read it to you because he was a nice guy and, you know, he seemed a little upset, like, oh, you, you looked at my profile, but you didn't read my thing. So I think this is you, buddy. So let's go and I'll read it. Check out the new STO on Warbly that just launched. The first STO on Warbly, now live with a token Oro, the gold security token offering that, oh, the gold security, okay, hold on, let me calm down. I see what they're trying to say. The first STO on, uh, on Warbly is now live with token on all the first gold security token offering that leverages an investment in mining operations and gold itself. Read more about it at Token Oro here. Bang. All right. There you go, brother. All right. <laughs> so, all right. I hope that was you, man. And look, if you're the guy and you were telling, and I didn't read your thing, because I don't see any other one. I read everybody. So, I think that's you. And so, there you go. But really, kind of don't send me that kind of stuff because STOs and all that, fuck all that, buddy. When it's making money, that's how it works. So, large caps, good to go. You buy all that, you're going to get rich. You should already begin making money. We're already up 300% on our large caps. This stuff here, bang, working product. That means when these institutional investors arrive, oh, they're going to pile their money into it. All this other crap over here. All those 2,000, hold on, let's even look how many fucking cryptos we got. Bang, look, look. We have 2,440 cryptos. Well, look, there's only about 40 of them that are actually making money. <laughs> so the rest of those 2,400, yo, leave that shit alone, dog. Don't fuck with that crap. Wait till wait till they onboard people and they come over to this side of the ledger. Yeah, revenue generating side. Yeah, then you buy it. But it's such a good idea. So, in your brain, but it's not a good idea till it's making money. That's a good idea. All right? All right. I don't tell you what to do with your money, but you know, I care, man. That's why I do this show. I mean, fuck, I do this shit for free. It's not because I'm just doing it for nothing. I want you guys to get rich. Look. So look, look, let's get let's do the how we do. Bang, look, look. Yes. All right, guys, great show. See? Yes. If I didn't sleep, if I had just done the show at the normal time, man, this would, that would have been a piece of shit show. So look, I'm glad it was a great show. As usual. So look, Binance, 30 tokens for the U.S. Well, that's good. I'm not going to bullshit you. Like I told you guys before. Well, I mean, tonight, I guess. Not before is in another show, but tonight. I always liked Binance's customer service. And they're only going to drop 30 tokens on us for right now. So if there's anything that you get on Binance now, but that wasn't on that list that I read to you earlier. All right, we'll start loading up on that shit so that, and you're an American, and start loading up on that shit um, so that when Binance cuts us off from their main thing that we buy it from now, and we only get these 30 tokens later, you'll have the stuff you want, all right? So look. Now, 15 countries to track crypto. Whatever, man. Uh, no big deal to me. You can track my crypto, the AML, money laundering, all that. And that's good. You know, it makes the, the institution guys are going to feel safe. Well, not feel safe. They're going to be safe. And uh, which is what we need, safety. I told you guys, man. I told you guys when I first started trading Forex, motherfuckers used to get ripped off all the time. That was the Wild West. And yeah, now it's safe. You know, and and that's what these guys demand, safety. So, bang, good for that. And then, Adgecrop says the hedge funds are coming. Bang, he says they're making money. Bang, they're doing good. So, look, look, here comes your money. Here comes the hedge funds. And like I told you, the prop desks are here. That's what's giving us our money right now. These smaller, you know, 100 million and under sort of hedge funds, right? Um, well, prop desks trading their own money so they're allowed to do stuff that a regular hedge fund who takes client money isn't allowed to do you know like i'm not allowed to take a client's money and buy v chain v chain's not regulated but i am allowed to take my own money and buy it well i mean obviously we do right but i mean even as a hedge fund guy as long as it's my money in the hedge fund the prop desk i'm allowed and so that's what's happening here guys there are no more that weekend shit we dealt with last year. Yeah, yeah, we're bouncing around between nine thousand and fourteen thousand. Bang, bang, bang! It's huge. It's crazy. It's volatile. Yeah, yeah. But are we going? Are, are we? Are we dropping down to six and all that? No, those days of those weekends are long over. 
Those are over. And uh, your money is just going to keep going from here. New money is just going to keep entering the market from here. We got the prop desks. Now we need regulation. We'll get the big, 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 big dogs. Wait till back gets here. Look, look. Oh, my gosh. Aerosex and all these boys get here. So money's on the way, brothers. Look, look. So let's get you back to your wives and lives. Let's shill it and kill it. Subscribe below. Press the bell so you get a notification when I do this show. Greatest show on earth. Greatest show in the multiverse. My name is Shamar Clark. Love talking money. Love talking crypto. This is the favorite time of my day. So look, look. Thank you for having me in my home for having me in your home hope you enjoyed the show hope you get your money right look look get that portfolio right look look get ready for that money because here it comes so look look brothers until tuesday it's shamari clark bang and i'm always on duty bang maybe a little late but you remember always on duty bang over and out